Welcome back to Runiverse. I'm Andrew, and in this video I'm returning to Grand Archive. So as of recording, the Kickstarter has just ended, but I still wanted to get in and play another game. So they have updated the print and play files and the tabletop simulator files to a version 1.1. And if you saw my previous one, you know I kind of went deep. That was my first game. This is my second game, but I'm going to try to be less loquacious this time around and just do a quick duel between uh, Lorraine against Rai, the, uh, the warrior against the mage. And also, unlike the previous game, I figured out how to switch between players so I can use the hand feature and I can put the memory in the correct spot. So I think for um, Lorraine here, the first thing we did is we did our materialization, which we searched our materialization deck here and pulled out the Spirit of Wind as our level zero champion and enter effect was draw six cards. So I went ahead and drew six and the inherited effect means wind is gonna be active. And I'm gonna play esteemed knight and we need to put three cards into memory for that. And we'll do these three cards here. There we go, three cards into memory and uh, we can pass the turn and we've kept up the favorable winds card. So if we need to, we can play favorable winds. Uh, esteemed knight could attack, but there's nothing to attack. So we'll pass the turn. All right, and then for Rai, we're going to go ahead and search the materialization stack for the Spirit of Fire. So we will bring up the Spirit of Fire. That's our level zero champion on this side. So we're going to have Fire active this game. And again, we have the Enter effect to draw six cards. So let's see what we get here. So I think let's play the Blitz Mage here, and we'll put these cards into memory to pay for that. And now we have this three attack, one health ally here, and we can attack either the Esteemed Knight or the Spirit of Wind. And I think let's just attack the Esteemed Knight to reduce pressure on ourselves. We'll just happily make that trade early on. So it's going to be three against the Esteemed Knight. And then the Lorian player has the option of uh, defending or having or rather retaliating with the Esteemed Knight to deal damage back to Blitz Mage. And uh, I'm not sure the order of operations, whether she chooses to retaliate first or not, but what we're actually going to do we are going to retaliate, but we are back on the Lorraine player's side here. Is She's going to cast Favorable Winds, which is going to give her allies plus one health. So the Esteemed Knight will have four health. And we do have to pay for that by putting card to memory. And this card will go to our graveyard. And uh, it, it does have this floating memory ability, which is new. And we'll probably get into that later. But I'm going to put it sideways just so I can remember and see that it's there with, uh, with floating memory there. And now the Esteemed Knight's going to have 4 health, and it's not going to die to the Blitz Mage, which is a bummer for Rai over here back on the Rai side. So we do exchange damage, and that is going to mean the Blitz Mage is defeated here. Um, but fortunately, we actually have uh, this other floating memory card here, the new Rai card here, Ignite the Soul, costs 1, and it deals a damage to a unit. So uh, we'll just go ahead and play that and pay for it here. And so that's going to deal one damage, and that'll be the one that we need to finish off the Esteemed Knight. And with that, the Rye player can end their turn, and we'll pass back to Lorraine. Which means the first thing we want to do is check Lorraine's materialization deck and see what we want to materialize. I think it makes sense to go ahead and hit level one here, and uh, we'll level up our champion. And we do have to pay one for that. So let's grab a die and uh, roll that. It'll be re-rolling fives and sixes here. And the fourth card here is going to be Banished, and that was our Spirit Blade Ghost Strike. And the rest of these cards we can return to our hand and then draw one card as we proceed with the game. The Dungeon Guide is very tempting. I think this is a really strong card, but so is the Dream Fairy. And I don't know if we want to put ourselves super low on cards this early. In fact, I might prefer to level up with Dungeon Guide hit level 3. Uh, because in addition to speeding you up, it's his fixed cost of banishing two cards, and materializing uh, Lorian level three costs three cards, so getting a one card discount is great as well. So we are currently level one. Oh, I did skip this. We need to uh, do her enter effect to materialize a weapon. It needs to be level zero, so we just have two options. I think I'll grab the Sword of Seeking. I don't really care about the True Sight, but uh, I do care about the Commander's Blade bonus. We might want that later on. So we'll bring out the Sword of Seeking here, and I'm going to go ahead and play Dream Fairy. So I'm going to flip these cards and move those to memory. And now Dream Fairy's enter effect is that each opponent banishes a card at random from their memory. So we'll, we'll go ahead and roll 
from left to right for Rai, again, re-rolling fives and sixes. So that fourth card there is uh, banished. Okay, and then we can attack with the Dream Fairy, attack for one. Just going to put one damage onto Rai. Doesn't have anything to do about that. And we could attack with the Sword of Seeking, but I don't think I will bother with that. Although I should put the uh, durability on it, unlike what I did last game. So it's going to have, uh, in the bottom right corner, it's got one durability. So we'll mark that with this die and switch back to Rai. So we'll also go to level one with Rai here. So we get Rai Spellcrafter, and he's immediately going to get two Enlightened Counters. We'll mark as so, and we need to pay for that with one uh, Banishing from our memory. So we'll roll uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that would be this first card here, so we lose the Arcane Sight. These cards can come back to our hand, and we'll draw one. So we have a really small hand thanks to that Dream Fairy, but uh, we do have Fireball, so we can has a class bonus to cost two less if our class matches, and Mage is our class. So we can play Fireball for two, so let's go ahead and do that. Accidentally selected this, but that'll go to our memory, along with the Creative Shock. And it's going to deal one plus our level, which is going to be a total of two, because our level is one. And two damage to the Dream Fairy will take that out. And now Dream Fairy says that uh, when it dies, each opponent draws a card. So we get to draw a card and see what we get here. So it's not a card we can play this turn. But perhaps next turn, if we don't uh, play anything from our materialization that costs one or more. So with that, we will pass back. So I don't have great materialization options here, but I think I'm going to grab this Life Essence Amulet. It costs zero, and if an ally control dies while well, it's not our turn, we can banish it to draw a card. So we'll bring that out, uh, add these cards back to our hand, and draw one. So now we do have four cards. Oh, we can do a follow-up Dream Fairy, or I was thinking we can Dungeon Guide. Uh, I do would I would like to, and I guess Dream Fairy is really going to keep Rye on the back foot. Whereas Dungeon Guide can put us up a level now, although we're not saving a card. But if I risk leveling up to level 2 and then trying to play Dungeon Guide, I might just lose the Dungeon Guide, paying for the materialization cost of level 2. It might just be worth it. I don't know that it's a race to level up, but for now, let's play the Dream Fairy again. I, I like that. Uh, maybe we won't get to Dungeon Guide, but that's a cost I'm willing to take. So this turn's going to look a lot like last turn. We'll just do... Half half split here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that'd be from the left to right. That'd be that one. So we get rid of that creative shock. And uh, with the Dream Fairy, enter effect. And we'll attack for one, putting one more damage on Rai. So he's level one right now and has 15 health. But with two damage on him, that brings him down to 13. And again, we're not going to use our durability from the sword. So we'll keep that around. And if the Dream Fairy does die, he'll get his card back. But our Life Essence Amulet will put us up a card. So there you go. So Rai's only got one card in memory, so he cannot go to level two. Uh, I don't know that we would necessarily want to, but let's see what zero options we have. We have a Life Essence Amulet of our own, but I don't know that we're going to be able to bring out an ally. I don't know if it's maybe more likely that our opponents can attack with three units. So let's, let's bring out the Surveillance Stone, and we'll see if we ever get to use it. Um, but we'll add this back to our hand and draw another card. So we can't afford the Barrier Servant, so maybe we'll just play Scry the Skies here. And the uh, question is, which card do we put into memory? Um, put that one. And we get to Glimpse level plus one. So we're going to look at that many cards, put any of them on top or bottom. And the two cards we're looking at are Fireball and Ignite the Soul. One damage to a unit. Unfortunately, we cannot follow up with another Fireball because uh, the class bonus brings it down to two, but we still only have uh, two. We're only going to have two cards in a hand, so we can't hey, play the Fireball. Ignite the Soul, on the other hand, only does one damage, so that's not enough to take out the Dream Fairy. Now, if we had gotten the Endora Scepter of Ignition, we would be able to do the two damage. For that reason, it might be worth it to take the Ignite the Soul now, just so we know we're going to have it later. But I can have both the cards. Um, so let's put Fireball back and then have Ignite the Soul be the one we draw this turn. So that'll be it for Scry the Skies. And again, we can play the Ignite the Soul, but it won't really do anything. So we can pass the turn. All right, now Lorraine can wake up her Dream Fairy here. And I did forget about the Favorable Winds, the Floating Memory. So Tabletop Simulator looks like it automatically corrected my sideways turned card. So let's put this 
put that off to the side and remember that we uh, we have these three cards in our memory, but we have also have the the extra card there. So we have four cards potentially, although we really just need to play Lorraine uh, level two. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, we don't have to, but I think we have enough cards that we can afford to. So we do need to lose, we need to pay two for that, but let's lose the favorable wins with the floating memory while paying for a memory cost. You can banish this from your graveyard to pay for one of that, and that'll reduce the chances that we lose the dungeon guide. So we just need to pay for one more. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And it's going to be this mill card here, which was the dungeon guide. And we can put this back in hand and draw one. So let's go ahead and play this weaponsmith we just drew, cost two. And uh, it's got a class bonus that at the beginning of a recollection phase, we can put a durability on a weapon. So we probably don't want to attack with our weapon now and lose it. Uh, we can put another durability on it next turn. And we'll attack one at a time, but uh, it's not really going to matter. Oops. So one and then two damage more on Tavai, bringing him down to effective 11 health until, of course, he levels up. We're not going to benefit from Lorraine Blademaster's enter effect because Rai doesn't have any allies, but I think I'm okay with that this time around. Because he's pretty, pretty far behind on cards, and uh, I don't want to waste time. So back to Rai, I've just like Lorraine, I've moved this Ignite the Soul out to the side here, and then we can search, and we do only have one card in our memory. Uh, we do have two cards in our hand, which Lorraine, I guess we didn't notice the cards in the hand because they're kind of up above the view. Here we can peek at uh, Lorraine's got no cards in her hand, but they would be up there um, if we wanted But uh, to see them if they were there. But we're going to go ahead and go to this Archmage form here. Uh, an inherited effect when you activate your first mage action at each turn get an enlightened counter so that's going to help us get catch up on cards a little bit as long as we can afford to pay for this too which we can with our one memory and our one floating memory so we can do that and draw a card and now we've got three cards so i do kind of want this floating memory but uh let's go ahead and just make sure we get this dream fairy out of the way and that we're going to get our card back for that so again the class bonus means this costs two less so it's only two so we can put both of these into memory and uh, deal three damage now because we're level two. So two plus one is three. And before anything else, that goes up to three. And we can deal three damage to the Dream Fairy. And again, when it dies, we get to draw a card. So we got another Fireball. And uh, I can also just draw a card. I don't know what else necessarily I would want to do with that. I don't know what we would necessarily draw that we'd want to use this turn. But I also don't know what I'm saving them for. So I am going to draw a card. So we remove that. As a reminder, uh, enlightened counters can you can spend three of them to draw a card. So here's an example of what we would want to use our enlightened counters on, other than drawing a card, and we also can't even play it anyway. So I think we're okay for now to have drawn that. So we'll go back to Lorraine and uh, let Rai keep waiting until level three, okay, so she can awaken that, clean that up a little bit, and uh, she's level two. She does not have three memory. We don't have the awaken memory cards anymore so she won't be able to get to level three this turn let's see what is in the material deck although i guess uh, before anything else at the beginning of a recollection phase we can put a durable durability counter so the sword of seeking goes up to two we haven't used it yet oh and also the uh, life essence amulet one of our allies died so we could have banished that to draw a card so we'll go ahead and do that as well and we can see we have an esteemed knight so incidentally with our draw for turn we're going to have four cards total with these two memory returning so if we want to play the Esteem Knight, uh, we might not want to materialize anything above level zero, which would mean just grabbing this Commander's Blade, and we could then give an ally plus one until end of turn, which we could actually use this time. And I think that's a perfectly reasonable play. So let's bring out the Commander's Blade. So we have two weapon options if we ever want to attack with Bahrain. So we'll go ahead and put one durability there to match its durability icon. We'll add these back to our hand and draw a card. And we already have a weapon smith, so I don't think we need another one. We can't play the ghost strike because we don't have an unlocked crux yet. And the disorienting wind isn't going to do us any good. So let's play the esteemed knight. Put these into our memory. And uh, we can make some attacks. So we do have a lot of durability building up here. Uh, we've got three total attacks. Uh, the enter effect of the commander's blade would have triggered as well. So the weapon smith will have two attack. So we can go ahead and attack for two here. And we can attack for two here. The question is, do we want to attack with Lorraine using one of her two weapons? So we can do one more damage and just use a little bit of durability. 
But because that would be our third attack with the unit, we would trigger the Surveillance Stone and give Rai an extra card. So at least for now, let's keep him off of uh, an extra card there, and we won't deal the one damage. So we will end our turn, which means Rai is not going to be able to go to level three. Well, I guess the one more card in hand wouldn't have helped his memory situation anyway. Uh, although there's a chance we draw an Ignite the Soul, which we play as an, a fast spell to put another card into our memory. But uh, at that, let's just see what our zero options are. So the Slight Fessence Amulet is one option. Uh, the question is, do we want to play Barrier Servant this turn? Because if we don't have an ally to trigger the Life Essence Amulet, it doesn't make any sense to bring it out. So do we want to play Barrier Servant? I think we'd rather take out the enemy creatures, the other allies over there. This has two attacks. So it's not going to be able to take out either of them. Although what we could do is attack for two and then ignite the soul, but that would require six total cards, and we're only going to have five. And Dora is another one or zero cost option that can deal one damage, but we can't bring out the Endora as well as the Life Essence Amulet. We also have the Bobble of Empowerment as an option, but I don't think we need that now. Let's bring out the Endora Scepter of Ignition here. And it'll just give us a little more control of the board under the right circumstances. So these will go back to hand, and we can draw one. And we drew Library Witch, which would have been a great uh, combination with that Life Essence Amulet, because this is an ally that is destined to die, indeed. I think we do want to Fireball something, so we're going to need to pay two for that. We're going to be able to deal uh, three damage to it. So let's see what we want to put. I'm going to keep the Ignite the Soul in hand. And uh, let's put this down along with maybe the Library Witch. We might end up putting Power Overwhelming into our memory as well. But let's, So we're going to deal three damage, and we do get immediately we get one of our Enlightenment counters. Question is, do we want to take out the Weaponsmith, uh, which is going to let Lorraine keep building up durability, or the Esteemed Knight? Now, Esteemed Knight does more damage and has Intercept. Not really worried about the Intercept but the two damage instead of one is a, it's a notable difference. And Lorraine already has a bunch of weapons that she's not even using with building up durability. So let's take out the Esteemed Knight and let her keep raising up her durability there. And with that, we are going to uh, end our turn. Okay, Lorraine gets to awaken the Weaponsmith and see... We do have three cards. We could go to level three. Do we have anything coming back to our hand that we want? Uh, we would like this Ghost Strike is certainly nice. If we do get to level 3, we want something to do. Um, level 3 actually wants weapons in our banishment, so we, we maybe don't want to keep adding durability. So we should add one here. So let's let's stack up the Sword of Seeking, uh, just so we can lose one, potentially, and start building up cards in banishment for when we do become the Crux Knight, which may or may not be this turn, because again, it's three cards. I don't know if we want to give up everything. And you know what? I've changed my mind. I do want to give up everything. We're going to become the Crux Knight. We're going to lose all three of these here. And uh, hope that that works out. So we do get to draw one card. We get the Wind Cutter that we can't play. But we expected that, but now we can start doing damage while we build up uh, cards again and hopefully start doing some cooler stuff. So Weaponsmith gets to attack for one, putting Riot nine damage. And Lorraine can attack using the commander's blade, so we're going to lose that durability. That's going to add one to her attack. Of uh, And she has plus one for each regalia weapon in our banishment. So let's go ahead and, and see. We think we just have the one. Or rather, I knew we didn't have any of those, so should not have done that. So, so But we're still, we still do want to do that, so we're going to do one damage. And then this is going to go to our banishment, and now we have one. So this will be a permanent tracker for regalia weapons in banishment. And Lorraine's attack is now permanently increased by one. And then we can pass back. But Rai actually has something he wants to do at end of turn, which is to ignite the soul. So we're going to deal one damage just directly to Lorraine. It's not going to do much, but uh, we put, have to pay for that. And now this is going to be a floating memory card. And because we played uh, a mage action card on a different turn than when we played that fireball, we do get to gain another counter. And now that it's our turn, so that was the end of Lorraine's turn, uh, and now we get to potentially become Rai Stormseer here. So just like Lorraine, we're potentially putting ourselves down a lot of cards, but hopefully we can 
start to catch up. So we're going to pay with the Ignite the Spark and then with two other of these cards. So five is going to be this one, unfortunately, and then this one here, the Library Witch. So we get to get the Barrier Servant back in our hand and then draw an Arcane Sight. So that's a pretty good draw. So let's also check for Rise Storm's here's new ability. So in my previous video, he had a different ability, which was you could pay a bunch of stuff to double stuff. But it, this is a much simpler version. I actually like the old one more. Um, hopefully they make like alternate versions of different level 3 Rise and different level 3 Lorraines and so on. So you can choose which one you want to use. That would be cool. Um, but at least for this, for the starter deck, they've switched to this. And of course, things are always changing. Obviously, this is a playtest version of the artwork and so on. So everything's a subject for change, but uh, I, I am a fan of the doubling. So, but for now we just get plus one level for each arcane element mage card in your banishment. So let's check how many arcane element mage cards we have in our banishment. There's one, there's two, and three. So he's actually level six. That is pretty notable. So he's level six already, which is pretty high. And so let's play Arcane Sight. It's going to give him another Enlightenment counter from the Inherited Effect from level 2. And we are plus 1 level until end of turn as well. And then we get to draw a card. So Endora is not going to let us really pick off the Weaponsmith or anything like that. And uh, we can play Library Witch. If we cash in these three Enlightenment counters, we can get a third card. And that's enough to play Library Witch, which could be nice. Uh, it also lets us put stuff into memory, whereas if we don't play anything, we don't have anything in our memory, and we can't uh, then materialize anything. So it's worth considering that we might want a Library Witch just for that reason. I'm a little bit feeling greedy, like I want to wait to Library Witch until I've brought out my uh, Life Essence Amulet, but I don't think that makes sense. We'll get more allies later if we really want them. So let's play the, oh, we do have to pay the three to draw a card. Let's make sure that's not something we'd rather do. So pure into mana we can't afford. Uh, would let us, let us get a bunch of, actually a lot of Enlightenment counters. Uh, so that's pretty nice. But now yeah, we'll go ahead and put that into memory along with this Barrier Servant to play Library Witch. So she now has Intercept. When she dies, we draw a card. And uh, I think that's uh, that's it. We're done. So Lorraine can awaken her cards. Um, is this a... does not look to be optional. I don't know the necessarily the trigger rules. It doesn't say May. So I'm not going to miss my trigger. I'll go ahead and add a counter here. So we have a lot of counters in this sort of Seeking. And we cannot materialize anything that with a cost because we have nothing in our memory. So we actually can't materialize anything this turn. It's a little bit unfortunate. Draw a card, so Faber will win. So that'll help us do a little more materializing if we want. Uh, wind Cutter gets plus one. So we, this is a two damage attack, which is perfectly fine, but we can't afford it right now. So it seems pretty good. But it looks like we're just going to start attacking with the Weaponsmith. And we'll attack Rai, but the Library Witch will intercept it. And when she does, so she will die, and Rai will draw a card. We'll go ahead and put a card into Rai's hand there. And then Lorraine can attack uh, using the Sword of Seeking. So this will go down to three. And it has True Sight, which doesn't matter. And plus her one permanent damage here, so she's attacking for two. We can put two more damage onto Rai. So he's got 12 damage out of 25 health. So this game does seem to be going a little bit slower, a little grinding it out here. Uh, and with that, Lorraine will end her turn. I will note she's planning to play Favorable Winds during Rai's turn, maybe at the end of his turn, or whenever it becomes relevant as a surprise, in order mostly just to get that floating memory and putting the Wind Cutter into memory so that we can then materialize something. All right, so now Rai has the option to materialize. We have more, uh, we do have two cards in our memory. Let's go ahead and grab the Life Essence Amulet. It's a little bit late, but uh, we'll see if that ends up mattering at any point. I'll put these back in hand. Uh, yeah, I kind of want to keep my cards in hand for now, uh, rather than spending them all as a materialization cost. So we can't afford either of our copies of Peer into Mana here. Barrier Servant we can play, and we do have that uh, Life Essence Amulet now. But we have no Enlightened Counters. I kind of just want to play this Arcane Disposition, which will let us draw three cards because of the class bonus. We have to discard our hand at end of turn, so we have to hope that we can play something out of that. Otherwise, we're basically just treading water and taking more damage from Lorraine. 
You can play Barrier Servant and attack the Weaponsmith, but uh, we don't have the Enlightened Counter to use Endora to finish off the Weaponsmith because it's three health. Another thing to consider is that if we use Barrier Servant uh, and then we put Arcane Disposition into memory, we, may, we might use it to materialize something and it ends up in our banishment, then our number goes up here to increase li rise level up to seven. But I think I'm still gonna go for this and put these into memory and draw three cards. We did get a card we can play, so I guess that is fine. Oh, but the focus means we can't get that cost reduction, but we can't afford to pay for it. Uh, we can't afford to anger the skies or arcane disposition. We don't wanna discard these cards. So let's go ahead and play focused Flames. Oh, we should have gotten one here. Um, this is slow, so we can't wait. And, and also, we have to discard our hand at end of turn, so that's another reason we can't wait to try to play it on Lorraine's turn and get an extra Enlightenment counter. So we're doing a deal four damage to an ally, which would be the Weaponsmith. So we do know Lorraine has the favorable wins, but that won't save the Weaponsmith. So take that out and put both of these into memory and pass back. All right, so Lorraine has, oh, I did mean to play the favorable wins at the end of turn, so this will go to memory. This will become floating memory. And uh, now when she goes to materialize, well, we actually have materials to pay with. Let's get this warrior's long sword out, and this is going to have two durability on it. And it attacks for two because it has... Uh, the class bonus there. So we're going to pay for that with this floating memory. Put this back in hand and draw. I guess we'll just play Scry the Sky, so we'll put this Wind Cutter back into memory, and Glimpse 1 plus 3 is 4. So it looks like Spirit's Blessing and uh, Spirit Blade Infusion are going to be able to be a pretty good combo turn. So I think I'm going to put Inspiring Call on the bottom of the deck. Uh, I'm going to want to probably just draw this one right away, so I'll go ahead and add that to my hand. We're not going to be able to use it this turn, but we might be setting up for a good turn next turn. Uh, Spirit Blade Infusion, we want to draw that next turn. The question is, do we want to sc scry this guy's on the bottom, or do we want to draw this one? You know what, let's just hope to draw the better card and not have to scry into it. So let's put that back and put this one back on top here, and then this goes over there. And now all we can really do is attack. And I think we will attack with the Warrior's Longsword because it has less durability and we want to build up Lorraine's uh, Crux Knight Regalia bonus attack weapon. A lot of wards. So here we go. Bring that down to one durability and we're attacking for uh, two damage against Rai, bringing him up to 14 out of 25. So now looking at our current memory that's about to come back to our hand, we've got two pure into mana. We could definitely play one of those and get a ton of Enlightened Counters which could raise our level quite a bit, or let us draw a few cards. But it doesn't feel like we're doing a lot. Arcane Disposition is very risky. Anger of the Skies doesn't do anything. Barrier of the Servant seems a little bit weak. So I'm thinking about playing Archimist's Prism. We have to go down a card, but it lets us basically redraw. I don't know. It's very, very iffy here. Um, we can get this Bobble in case we you know, preserve all our cards and have the potential to go up farther in level later. Min mana limiter is not the time for that. Tome of Knowledge is fine. And Wind Resonance Bobble, if we kind of want to put that on Lorraine, you know, do you want to play Wind card or we might draw, but with her being level three, she's probably going to be more focused on Crux cards than Wind. So that doesn't seem ideal. So it's really just this Bobble, just because it's free, or the Arcanist's Prism to try to get some better cards going. But maybe Peer into Mana is just good enough, and uh, let's not reshuffle everything back at the cost of a memory, cost of a card, so I'm going to bring out the Bauble and uh, put these back in hand and draw. Let's see, so we get Focus Flame, so we don't get the Focus Effect. It's going to cost two, which is fine, but hits an ally, which there aren't any allies, so none of that's going to work. I guess we're just playing Peer into Mana. Uh, we do get a counter for that. We have to pay. So let's pay one, two. Let's put both of these arcane cards. And we're not really excited about them. And if we banish them, that's actually good for our level. And we don't need a barrier servant, do we? We need to play an ally if we ever want to trigger this life essence amulet. But maybe something different would be better. I'm not sure. Or we might just need to defend ourselves. All right. So we get 
2 plus our level, and our level is pretty high. So our level is 6. We could just get two more counters. Now, two, encounter, two levels in this case turns into two-thirds of a card, and uh, because, because we're turning them three counters into one card, so we're giving up a card in order to get two-thirds of a card. I'd rather use this on a turn where we get bigger damage bonuses or cost reductions and things like that. We don't know what we're going to draw, but we're not necessarily going to draw anything. So I'm not going to use the bobble. I'm just going to get uh, eight more counters. So we'll do that and that. And now we have 10 uh, enlightened counters. So the question is, do we want to cash them in to draw now? If we did that, we would go down to one enlightenment counter. And then we would have four cards in hand is not enough to play our second peer into mana. But because our power overwhelming is in the Banish already, I don't think there's more than one of these in the deck, so may as well just cash them in for cards. So let's just go down to one and draw three more cards. The Arcane Blast uh, costs our level less to activate, so our level being six is nice. I forgot this is uh, tracking here, so yeah, so our level is six, so this only costs five is nice but it only does 11 damage. Lorraine's got 28 health, 27 remaining so even two arcane blasts is not enough. Careful study costs two and gives us five enlightenment counters. Impassion Tutor when she attacks our champion gains a level until end of turn. It's not bad. I'm gonna go ahead and play the careful study and we're gonna put Impassion Tutor and Pure into Mana into our memory. That's gonna let us get five more so we have six. We could just draw those two cards right away Sure, let's do it. And let's play Scry of the Skies. Yeah, we're setting up for a big turn here. So we'll put another card into memory, and we get to look at seven cards. And I don't really want any of these except for this Spell Shield Arcane. So this is going to let us prevent some damage, and uh, that could be pretty good. The only thing is we'll have to pay for it. If we play this on our opponent's turn, the class bonus makes it cost only one. Uh, it is fast, so we would get to trigger the gaining another Enlightenment counter, plus however much damage we gain that many Enlightenment counters. But we have to pay with the Arcane Blast, which puts it into memory and is a risk for losing it when we materialize something. But I think I'm going to risk it. So I think the card I want the most maybe is the Magus Disciple. Um, maybe Blitz Mage after that. I'm not really excited about any of these. But let's put all the rest of them on the bottom. And this one will go on the top. And then we draw a card, and that is the end of this Scry the Skies. And now we have all this stuff in play, all this stuff in memory. And I think we're looking okay for next turn. We'll see what we can do. We really do want to draw more Arcane Blast, though. I'm not sure how many there are in the deck, because we already have one in Banishment. But anyway, it's back to Lorraine, and we have kind of planned out a bit of her turn. I don't think she can afford to materialize anything, however... So we have to just draw a card. Yeah, we, we in order to do our little thing here, we're not going to be able to uh, materialize anything because we need this card in hand to pay for the Spirit's Blessing, uh, which does draw us another card, which we probably won't be able to use, which is awkward, uh, but that's just the way the card flow functions. And also to make this work, we're going to need to attack with our Sword of Seeking, which isn't really our optimal choice. We'd love to be able to attack with a Warrior's Longsword, do an extra damage, and have it go into the Banishment to be another plus one. Uh, but we need to do it this way, I believe. So we're going to do one, two damage to Rai. And now Rai sees that we've got three cards in hand. We've attacked with a suboptimal weapon. We don't have any allies or anything. So are, is more damage coming, or should we just use the Spell Shield now? So he does have those two cards in hand. So Rai's thinking, does he want to prevent this two damage attack? and risk taking more damage later that he could have prevented, or does he want to save it and hopefully prevent more damage later? Although the thing is, the Spirit Blade Infusion only costs less if your champion has dealt damage with the attack. So unbeknownst to Rai, it's actually better to prevent the lower damage attack because it prevents the higher damage attack from even happening. So you know what, let's let Rai play his... Uh, play his thing now. Let's say he he does he knows about it and he does want to prevent that early damage to prevent the infusion from working. So he's going to play Spell Shield Arcane. Costs two less because he's a mage. 
he's going to gain two enlightenment counters for preventing two damage. So do that. And oh, that's our level bonus. So there you go, two. All right. And then, so Nalorian's like, okay, well, my damage is prevented. I can play Wind Cutter, but I've already, or the weapon doesn't have to exhaust there, but Wind Cutter won't work um, because Lorraine's already exhausted. Spirit's Blessing can ready her or wake her, but we have to return Regalia to our deck. And that's one of these that we paid for. I mean, I guess the Sword of Seeking was free, and we can bring it back for free next turn. Spirit Blade Infusion costs two less if our champion is dealt damage this turn, but she hasn't. It was prevented. So we wouldn't get this plus three damage bonus as well as drawing a card. So it might be better to just save this whole combo for next turn, which then begs the question, are we are we again going to not materialize anything because we don't have anything in our memory and we don't have any zero costs less? At that point, maybe it makes sense to play Spirit's Blessing because not only do we get a card into memory, but we get another level zero cost item to bring out. Uh, just so we're doing something. And then we'll, we'd also get to attack for uh, two more damage and put this longsword into our banishment to permanently increase her damage output. The problem is that strands the Spirit Blade Infusion, which uh, we can always pay for it. Uh, just we have to pay the two. So yeah, you know what? We don't have to do a combo turn. Let's just go ahead and play Spirit's Blessing, put this into memory to pay for that, and we have to return a Regalia to our deck. So that goes back here. And we're going to wake our champion and draw a card. And now we can attack with Lorraine and lose this. Which we'll put it here, which changes this to a 2. But this attack's just going to be for 2. Putting Rai up to 16 out of 25. And we'll go back to him. All right, and now Rai does have a lot of cards in his memory. So we're going to go add these all back. And do we... Oh, actually, no, I need to... Forgot about this step. Materialize. What do we want? I actually wouldn't mind a more expensive card at this point. Let's go ahead and get the Tome of Knowledge. At this point, I don't want the Arcanist Prism because I don't want to shuffle up all those cards I put on the bottom of my deck. I don't really want any of those. So we're going to get the Tome of Knowledge. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so here I've grabbed a D8. Let's see. Card number four. So that'll be this one. It's not arcane, so we don't get to raise our level. But now we can add these to our hand and draw a card, which is another Impassioned Tutor, which can give us another level. So I think we will peer into mana again this turn, but first let's play an Impassioned Tutor. Oops, just one, just, just one. Uh, so that's going to cost two, which can be pretty much whatever. Let's put these arcane cards we don't want in, and then uh, she can attack for one. Which gives us our champion plus one level until end of turn. So it's going to be the second point of damage. And then we can play Pure into Mana, which will put us to three. And uh, we have to pay for that with four cards. We actually, hopefully we don't lose that um, Arcane Blast. That would be the, the one we don't want to lose there. Uh, but we're going to get uh, two plus our level in Enlightenment. Our level being seven because of this one bonus. So we're going to get seven more, bringing us up to ten. And that'll be the end of Pure Into Mana, and that'll be the end of our turn. All right, Lorraine's going to need a weapon to see what we've got. Let's go ahead and bring out the Seer Sword, so we're going to have to pay with this Wind Cutter. But this is going to let us uh, glimpse when we attack, and we're going to get three attacks out of that. And then we can draw, and oh, we got another Spirit Blade Infusion, which is nice. I think we're going to play it. It's not going to cost two less to activate, but we're just going to play one um, and then put these other two into memory. And that's going to give plus three to our sword. And if it hits, we get to draw a card. So we will attack with Lorraine. This time we're attacking for, for six. That's a big attack, putting Rai up to 22 out of 25. And that is a dangerous territory to be in. So the sword goes down to two. Uh, we do get to glimpse one and decide if we want to draw this on our next turn. I don't think we need that, though. We'd rather draw some powerful, cheap crux card. So we'll put on bottom and pass back. So that was a big attack. I don't know if Rai knows the danger he's in. Um, we do have a lot. We have 10. We could draw three cards at the end of Lorraine's turn and uh, potentially even play a fast card. Might be worth doing that. We probably could have done that anyway in case we drew another barrier. So let's do that and, and just see 
we get another fast card because then we can do and get another counter out of it just kind of milking it uh, arcane sight is it worth it to give up a potential level for one more enlightened counter probably not so we're going to keep the arcane sight to use on our own turn and uh, then on our own turn i don't know i don't know if we can risk losing the i mean even though it's only a, like a one in six that we would materialize and lose our other arcane blast we've got two in hand now uh, I don't know if we want to risk. We can do Mana Limiter. Uh, we could have not drawn those three cards. Yeah, I'm going to bring out the Mana Limiter. I don't think it's going to matter, but it's free. Uh, and if we get up to six again, we might be able to draw off it. But if we only get up to three, we won't be able to... I think the Limiter will prevent us from drawing a card with it. We have to get to six before we can do anything. But yeah, let's, let's, let's run the risk here. Add these two hand, draw. Now we got a big old hand here. I think the plan is we want to play Arcane, or nope, Arcane Blast. So we have two of them, and that's 22 damage. 22 plus 2 is 24, so we still need to do four more damage. And Passion Tutor can do one of that. Focus Flames only hits an ally. Anger of the Skies only hits allies. Endora can hit a unit, but we can't pay for it. So I think we're actually poised to pull it off. Again, a very close game. Uh, we got up to 22 out of 25, but I think we're going to get to finish Lorraine off from two health. So we're going to start by playing Arcane Sight, and that's just going to give us one more counter. And our champion gets plus one level until end of turn, and we draw a card. So that's an okay little start to the sequence here. So let's track our temporary levels here. We've got one. Um, that's temporary, but we also have this one from the Tome of Knowledge. Uh, we're going to crack this bauble, so that's two more. Let's just put that at four. Anything that's not... Uh, this is from the Arcane cards in Banishment from Rai Stormseer's ability. And then, of course, our base level here is three. So three, six, ten is our current level. And now we can attack with the Impassioned Tutor, which is going to bring it up to eleven. She says... When she attacks, our champion gets plus one level in son of turn, so that's going to be one damage on Lorraine from that attack. We're going to play another Impassioned Tutor, so we need to pay two cards for that. And uh, she's going to attack, which brings us up to 12, level 12, and uh, deal another damage here. And we're going to play this Barrier Servant that I was kind of talking trash on earlier, but that's going to be another attack for two damage. Whoops. Two damage there, so uh, as intercept we can remove two enlightenment counters to front damage to it, but right now we just want two more damage. And now Arcane Blast is very efficient. It costs level less to activate, and our level is 12, so it costs 12 less, so it's an actually negative one cost. I don't think we get paid back for that, but this is going to be free to play, and it's going to deal 11 damage, so that's 11 damage. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, that's 17, and then the other free Arcane Blast for another 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 28 damage, 28 health. Cutting it close for sure, but Rai pulls it out. Again, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. Uh, at least this time Lorraine get, did get to be level 3 for a while. She did get to play a couple Crux cards, not in the combo-tastic way we had hoped for, uh, but she's very tight on cards, and I guess that's just the way that deck plays out, whereas Rai's deck is much more flush with cards and just needs to reach the critical mass of being able to do something like this turn here, for example. So thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of Grand Archive in the comments if you missed the Kickstarter or if you're if you were a backer interested to hear it. I did back it, so I'll be looking forward to getting a starter set and uh, a box later on in the year next uh, this year so thanks for watching subscribe so we get more subscribers and bye